I'm Dr. Rita McGuire. I am the chief medical officer here at Wakana and one of the co-founders. And I'm telling you, I need to change my picture because no longer do I have long hair, but that is me. And I represent the pillar of health. And I wanna just, I wanna welcome all of our guests, all of our business partners um, to our webinar tonight. Again, the topic is a CVD and hypertension. Uh, we tried to share this topic uh, maybe uh, last week or so or the week before, and I was not successful in sharing my screen, but we have everything up and running this evening. So we're going to get started. And first, we're going to talk about cannabis, because I think it's really important that you understand the difference between CBD and when people talk about either medical or recreational marijuana. So cannabis is the family, and the family of cannabis has two species. Uh, one species on the right, and that's the species we're going to concentrate on tonight, is called hemp. Um, hemp is the species that gives you what we say the health without the high. And why? It's because hemp has very, very trace amounts of THC. And THC, or delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, it is the compound that gives you the high. So hemp has very little, very little, 0.3% or less of THC. But what hemp has that gives us the health without the high is CBD, cannabidiol. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And we're going to talk about the cannabidiol that comes from the hemp species. See, because... CBD, cannabidiol, can also come from the marijuana species. And that's the species on the right. It's called marijuana. It gets you high. It gets you uh, very paranoid. It will give you the munchies. Um, and it does that because it has very high levels of THC and very small amounts of CBD. So we're going to talk about the hemp species tonight. We're going to talk about CBD that comes from the hemp species tonight. We're not going to talk about anything that gets you high. Uh, we're not going to talk about anything that gets you paranoid. We're not going to talk about anything that gives you the munchies. So CBD as it relates to hypertension and its role in improving those who have hypertension, we're going to concentrate on some of the medicinal benefits that CBD affords us, and that is it is an anti-inflammatory. It is a um, relaxant of the blood vessels. It's called a vasorelaxant. So it ha actually helps the blood vessels to open up. It also helps to reduce arterial blockage. You know, we see many folks who have high blood pressure. They have blockage uh, from having plaques from cholesterol elevations. CBD also relieves pain and anxiety. You know, many times we see in our patients who are in pain, they may be post-surgical patients or, or maybe they just had a C-section or a hysterectomy or maybe they had a knee replacement and they're coming out of surgery and they have pain, many times their blood pressure may be high. And then people who are anxious, you've seen those type A's, right? They have high anxiety levels and many times their blood pressure is elevated. So CBD not only can address those who have hypertension, but more specifically, CBD addresses the symptoms that we see that many people have with high blood pressure. So we'll talk more about CBD a little later, but let's talk about hypertension. You know, hypertension in America affects about 75 million people. That's about a third of adults in the population are affected with hypertension. And I'm telling you right now, stress-induced hypertension is at its all-time high. Why? Because of pressures at work, daily life, COVID-19, social unrest. I'm telling you, three weeks ago, I got my first injection for the Pfizer vaccine, and I don't have hypertension, but I'm telling you, I was a little anxious, and my blood pressure was like 170 over 90. 
I was like, I've never had high blood pressure in my life. So there's stress induced hypertension as well. There's hypertension that we see sometimes from past trauma, from those who have PTSD and they start to recall those horrible events. And then we also know that unresolved or untreated or even undertreated hypertension can lead to heart conditions, heart attacks, strokes, and many more things. So what is high blood pressure? There are different categories of blood pressure. There's something that's, that's normal. Uh, the systolic is that number that's at the top, and it's an indication of the contraction of the heart muscles. And then the diastolic is the number at the bottom, and it represents our heart relaxing, right? So we absolutely don't want either one of those numbers elevated. So normal blood pressure is typically less than 120 systolic and less than 80 diastolic. Elevation is really starting at 120 to 129 systolic and less than 80 diastolic. Stage one hypertension is systolic between 130 and 139 and diastolic between 80 to 89. Stage two is 140 systolic or diastolic 90. And then hypertensive crisis is any systolic higher than 180 and any diastolic higher than 120. So you can see at 180 over 120, your heart is like this, right? It's not able to relax, it's contracting, and it is a medical emergency. So what are some of the symptoms of high, high, hypertension? You know, headache, severe headache. It's typically severe, a headache that you really have never encountered before. Fatigue, excessive fatigue, confusion, irregular heartbeat, chest pain. You know, we talk about the traditional or the more common signs of someone even having a heart attack, and that's pain in the left arm that's radiating from the chest. But not always do people who have hypertension have any symptoms. Sometimes they can feel perfectly fine. Uh, also, there can be visual, vision problems and blood in the urine. So those are some of the symptoms. There are many, many symptoms. And of course, sometimes people are asymptomatic. They have no symptoms. So there's two different types of hypertension. There is something called primary or essential. In most cases, this type of hypertension is not known, like the cause. But typically, these people are obese. Uh, they're smokers. Uh, they drink a lot of alcohol. They don't get a lot of exercise. They have these sedentary lifestyles. And they're under a lot of stress. And then there's secondary hypertension, and that's the result of other medical conditions or problems like kidney disease or liver disease or diabetes. So when we look at, again, hypertension that is not treated or complications of hypertension, it absolutely always causes in-organ damage. So it starts to now cause other organs to be affected, like the heart, uh, it can cause a heart attack, or it can cause the heart to become very large. It's called cardiomyopathy. And we see that a lot in our pregnant moms. Uh, cardiomyopathy is deadly. It kills a lot of our pregnant moms because when you're pregnant, you have something called an increase in, in volume in your blood vessels, and then you tack on hypertension that causes the muscles to be uh, enlarged, and it's a really deadly condition. And then heart failure. Hypertension complications can also cause renal failure. You know, we see a lot of dialysis around now, um, and it is a result of many of those patients having long-term hypertension that was not, many times, not adequately um, treated. Blood vessel damage, like atherosclerosis and aneurysms. Um, I had a very dear girlfriend in high school who decided to just stop taking her blood pressure medication. 
and she ended up with an aneurysm and passed away. And so it's really important that if you have hypertension and you're on medication, don't stop taking your medication just because you feel fine. You know, don't stop taking your medication because maybe one or two days or many days your blood pressure is normal. Always consult with your physician. It can also affect the brain, a neurological complications like stroke and dementia, uh, the eyes, retinopathy or visual loss. And then of course, neurologically, again, with headaches, confusion, and even convulsions and strokes. So these are really, really serious complications of hypertension. So always be mindful that if you're on medications, please continue to take the medications until your physician titrates, decreases, and officially tells you to stop taking them. So this is a great segue into medications. There's a lot of antihypertensive medications. And absolutely, this is a great picture of many patients that are on this many antihypertensive medications. Um, initially, we as physicians want to really try to have you incorporate lifestyle modifications, right? And that's why I'm a big proponent in, in working out and mindfulness, meditation, yoga. Uh, if you are sedentary, you need to get active, doing something, making sure your diet is free from a lot of processed foods, fried foods. So lifestyle modifications is really the first thing that we want to address before starting you on all these medications, right? And if lifestyle modifications are not adequate in reducing your blood pressure, then we have to go into different medications. Uh, typically, the very first medication is something you call a water pill or a diuretic. And if that's not um, bringing your blood pressure down, then your doctor will typically start adding on different medications like ACE inhibitors, um, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, angiotensin uh, medication to reduce your blood pressure. So there are many times that when you're adding medications uh, for patients to reduce their blood pressure, even multiple medications don't work. So there are some people that have four, five, six different antihypertensive medications to reduce their blood pressure. But again, to avoid all of that, lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle modification is what you should be doing to just prevent all this from happening. So how does CBD help with your blood pressure or someone that you may love that has high blood pressure? Again, we're gonna be speaking about CBD that comes from the hemp species. So that is the species that has very trace amounts of THC, 0.3% or less, and higher levels of CBD. So we, again, we say it gives you the health without the high. So let's talk about the benefits of using CBD for high blood pressure. And again, those benefits, when we look at our, our chart of all of the different main compounds that the hemp plant produces, um, we look at CBD in helping to reduce inflammation. When we talk about hypertension, we're also talking about inflammation of the blood cells. Inflammation of the blood cells causes elevated blood pressure because the vessels are inflamed. The vessels start to constrict. Blood flow is now being restricted and pressure is high. CBD also functions to reduce arterial blockage. And we talked about that. Many people who are hypertensive have high cholesterol. Many people who are hypertensive have high cholesterol. Many times they're diabetic. So CBD also reduces blood sugar levels. It also helps to relieve pain. We talked about how those who are in pain many times have an elevated blood pressure due to their pain, due to their chronic arthritis, due to their chronic lupus, or any other condition that causes chronic pain. 
CBD also relieves anxiety. The anxiety causes elevated blood pressure. And we see that in patients, even patients who are having a heart attack. They become very anxious, which increases their blood pressure even more. A story today, point uh, taken, is that one of my very dear girlfriends had her vaccination done today. She has anxiety issues, right? She got her vaccination after her first shot. They called me emergently to the ER. Her heart rate was like 140 and her blood pressure was through the roof. And just the anxiety for her in getting the vaccination really sent her blood pressure up. So she's someone that really needs CBD, right, in her life. Um, CBD also is a vasorelaxant, as we see here, causing the blood vessels to be relaxed. There's other cannabinoids that actually help to reduce inflammation and help to reduce pain and help to uh, reduce anxiety, like CBG and CBC and Delta 9 THC. So it's really the whole plant, part of the hemp plant that we need along with CBD to help reduce our blood pressure. So how does it work? You know, how do all of these um, compounds that the hemp plant produces, how does it really work? And it's a science. The science is called the endocannabinoid system. And this system plays a role in many, many regulatory and physiological, physiological processes in our body. You know, this system not only helps to reduce blood pressure and helps to reduce inflammation and pain and heart rate, but this system and science also helps to regulate our appetite, our immune system, our memory, our, our, our reduction in stress. And the way it does that is that our body actually has receptors that are looking for cannabis and its constituents, its byproducts like CBD and THC and, and um, uh, CBG and all of the other cannabinoids to help to put our body in balance. So the science behind how CBD does this, as far as the cardiovascular function, as far as our heart and our blood pressure is through the endocannabinoid system. So it's not a snake oil, it's not a magical potion, there's real science behind how CBD does that. So this is a great, great diagram that you can see how CBD reduces blood pressure by how? By dilating the vessels in our heart, by reducing the inflammation, by helping to reduce the neural, um, the nerve, uh, the neurons in our brain, the, or any possible neuronal damage that high blood pressure can cause with a stroke or any other neurological issues and aneurysms. So what happens is that CBD comes in, it reduces the inflammation, it reduces the pain, it reduces the constriction, it improves the blood flow to those important organs we talked about, like our liver, in our kidney, in our retina, in our eyes, so because of the receptors in all of these different parts of our body, CBD has been very, very effective in helping those who have high blood pressure. So this is a really good chart that you can remember how it will cause not only direct benefits on the blood vessels, but it also will cause benefits to other in organs, like our brain, our liver, our kidney, our eyes, and our heart. So let's talk about our products. And let's talk a little bit about our company. The name of our company is Wakana. We were launched on April the 20th. And we were launched by four African-American women. I want you to meet my other three business partners and co-founders. Melissa Boston is our CEO. She brings to us over 29 years of experience in direct sales. 
She has been a leader in not only corporate America, but in the network marketing arena. She is an author. She is a social media strategist. Our president or our CFO, Dr. Patricia Van Pelt, again, brings to us years of experience as an entrepreneur. In fact, she is our state senator here in Illinois, serving her third term. And then our CSO, Phyllis Nash, brings to us over 29, 30 years of experience in business and arenas like the restaurant, real estate, and liquor industry. And then myself, I bring to you over 30 years experience as an obstetrician gynecologist, um, as an advocate for cannabis, and all four of us have worked together for the last three years, really being uh, the pioneers in the cannabis space on the hemp side. So when you talk about and think about and see CBD, you know, it's important that you have a company and a product that you trust. And the reason being is that not all CBD is made equally. See, there is CBD at gas stations. Can you imagine that, buying a CBD product at a gas station? And why that's important that you all know as guests on the line that not all CBD is made equally is because hemp is a bioaccumulator, meaning that when you grow hemp and you don't grow it and cultivate it organically, it will accumulate what's ever in the soil. It will accumulate toxins. It will accumulate mold and mildew, heavy metals. So whatever in that soil will be in your product. And so here at Wakana, we offer some of the most rich medicinal hemp that's fully compliant with the State Department of Agriculture regulations, meaning that our hemp is sourced from organic farms. Our products are also industrial hemp registered and our products are Farm Bill compliant. See, in 2018, the Farm Bill was passed, which now allows hemp to no longer be a scheduled one drug. So now we can legally sell, we can consume, and we can even cultivate and grow hemp in all 50 states. Now, what's important that you know about hemp and the Farm Bill is that you wanna ensure that your product is sourced from hemp and not marijuana. Why is that important? Well, if you have random drug screens at your job and you're taking a CBD product that's sourced from marijuana, remember I told you CBD sourced from marijuana has a very high THC level. In addition to, you will probably be a little high and have the munchies and maybe even be a little paranoid. So our products are fully compliant with the 2018 Farm Bill stating that our products are sourced from hemp and not marijuana. So potential concerns with using CBD for maintaining or reducing blood pressure, it's really important that you talk to your physician. You know, these statements have not been approved by the FDA, so if you're pregnant, nursing, if you're on medication, specifically if you're on antihypertensive medications, that you talk to your doctor. You know, we've done many, many drug-drug interactions and CBD is absolutely safe for many people that are on antihypertensive medications. So once your physician knows that you're on and want to take CBD, make sure that you space your medications about two to three hours apart from using your CBD. So we've seen hundreds of people that have been able with the help of their physician, and that's really important, with the help of their physician, with the guidance of their physician to reduce and even come off of some of their antihypertensive medication. So of course we can't make any claims, we can't make any diagnosis, we can't say that CBD will, will cure your hypertension, but what we can say is that there's research out there and we want you to do the research. We want your physician 
to be open to do the research that shows that CBD is an anti-inflammatory property to help reduce the inflammation, that CBD is a basal relaxant to help dilate the vessels. CBD is an anxiolytic, anti-anxiolytic, which helps reduce anxiety. CBD is also a reduction of pain. It's an analgesic, so it helps to reduce pain. So all of these things will help to improve blood pressure. Is CBD safe? Well, again, I, I want to remind you that not all CBD is made equally. So that's why here at Wakana, we do full panel testing on all of our products. We do full panel testing to ensure that our products are free from mold, mildew, heavy metals, toxins, and residual solvents. Our certificates of analysis will show you the milligrams in the product, the fact that it's containing less than 0.3% or less of THC, we talked about that, and it shows you the full cannabinoid profile, a full profile that shows you that the products are free from all of those toxins that can make you sick if you consume. So let's talk about some of our products. You know, our Power Hemp MD is one of our tinctures that is our most potent product. So if you're dealing with someone or maybe you're on the line that has pretty severe hypertension, you're on many, many medications, this is something that you wanna consider with again, incorporating your physician and being on board. The Power Hemp MD is 750 milligrams of CBD in a 15 ml bottle. It's our most potent product. It's for those who are really looking to uh, address more severe challenges that they may be facing in their health. This is a tincture that you'll place underneath your tongue. And it's really important when you're incorporating CBD that you start low and start slow. You know, you don't need a lot of CBD. So more is not better. So I always recommend with all of our tinctures that you start with three drops twice a day. You may say, but Dr. Rita, I'm having like severe issues. Well, knowing that you can always go up is something that you can do. But starting with high amounts of CBD initially is not a good thing. And it's not a good thing because it could give you a side effect. It could make you excessively fatigued or it could give you some nausea or maybe a mild headache. So starting low and starting slow is always recommended. So three drops twice a day. You can also increase it to eight drops twice a day and maximum dose is 15 drops twice a day. Again, is organically product that we get of analysis. It's tested. Again, it's, um, our other power products, I had to mention that the power products are products that contain the legal limit of TA on the left. Those are the black label products. Uh, we have a water soluble. That's a product that you can put in your water, your juice, your smoothie. We have a 500 milligram tincture and we have a 500 milligram culinary product. That's a product you can actually bake and cook with, or you can use it as a tincture under your tongue. So again, our power products are products that should not be used or consumed if you have random drug screens at your job. We have our pure products. Our pure products are for those who have random drug screens at their job and they contain less than 0.0% or less of THC. So what we have available is our pure tincture that is 300 milligrams in a 15 ml bottle. You place it under your tongue, you hold it under your tongue for about 60 seconds before you swallow. And again, this is a product that you're gonna use if you have random drug screens. Then we have our topical products. Remember, you know, pain, chronic pain can cause your blood pressure to be elevated. So we wanna reduce your pain if you have pain. 
to as, as much as possible. We have our topical liquid power relief. We have our topical 200 milligram salve. We have our 500 milligram topical salve and we have our 400 milligram topical salve. And again, topical products, all of our topical products are power products, meaning that yes, they have the legal limit of THC in them, but they will not pass the blood brain barrier. They will not pass into your urine drug screen. So they are safe for those who have pain. They are safe for those who have urine drug screens. They're safe for those who have issues with blood pressure because they may have excessive or chronic pain. And then we have edibles. Our edibles are amazing. We have our power gummies and we have our pure gummies. So we have products for even those who have random drug screens at their job. Our power gummies are something that you wanna take at night. Why? Because we understand that sleep deprivation can also be a reason for elevations in your blood pressure. So while you sleep, you can reduce inflammation because we talked about CBD improving and reducing inflammation. And while you're sleeping, you can get that restorative REM sleep. That sleep that helps to restore your immune system. And then our power gummies on the right side, again, are for those who have random drug screens. You want to use those, I mean, pure gummies, excuse me, you want to use those pure gummies as well for the same thing, for sleep, for inflammation, for anxiety reduction. And I always recommend that you use all of the products together. You use the tinctures, you use the topicals, and you use the gummies. You can also use our smokable. Our smokable products are products that are fast acting our cartridges or our CBD joint. Again, these products work within one to five minutes. So when we're talking about anxiety, we're talking about pain, we're talking about sleepless nights, all of these things and symptoms can cause your blood pressure to be out of control. So within one to five minutes of taking one to three pulls, either on our CBD joint or our CBD cartridge is all you need three times a day to really address issues and symptoms that are causing those hypertensive patients and family members. So again, when we talk about the research, when we talk about the studies, when we talk about the science with CBD, there's over 20,000 peer review articles that you can find. This is one of many of the information and the uh, um, pre or where the presentation came from tonight. Many, many studies out there. You know, engage your physician. Engage your physician in looking at the studies about CBD and hypertension. So I'm going to take time out now for questions. Uh, you can put those questions in the chat box if you have any uh, on the. Zoom, there's also a Q&A area. You can put your questions in the Q&A area as well. So far, no questions. And Maggie, you have a question out there. What is the subject? The subject is hypertension. So if you're a guest on the line, um, I want you to contact the person that invited you. Um, that person is going to get you set up to get uh, products in your hand, um, get products even to those who you may know that have high blood pressure, even those who you know may have anxiety issues, uh, even those that you may know that have pain. You know, all of these things, pain, anxiety, insomnia, you know, they don't uh, help 
with those who have hypertension. So we want to reduce anxiety in those people. We want to help them sleep well. We want to help to reduce pain. And we want to help to, in the end, reduce the possibility of in-organ damage. You know, hypertension is nothing to play around with. Again, it can be a silent killer. You can be someone that has no symptoms and not even know that you are walking around with high blood pressure. So lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle modifications, getting enough rest, getting enough water, eating well, not eating well, but eating healthy, right? Reducing the amount of processed foods, fried foods, in your life, um, getting more yoga, getting more meditation, reducing stress. All of you know what happened today on the news. I mean, that's stressful enough, unbelievable, but believable. So making sure that you have these amazing products uh, in your medicine cabinet and working with your physician. You know, more and more physicians are now being more open to learning about CBD. So you want to engage your physician. You want to tell your physician that you have really learned a lot about the benefits of CBD and how it can assist with hypertension. Can you take uh, the tincture with your vitamins? Yes, you can. You can take the tincture with your vitamins. Yes, I believe that the, yep. This webinar is being recorded. It's always being recorded. So some people are having problems getting on, Maggie. I'm not sure why. That's not good, but it's being recorded. Um, let's see, something about is the pure topical showing up in the blood screen? So none of the pure products will show up um, in the urine drug screen. So we have a pure tincture, which is uh, an oil you place underneath your tongue. We have pure gummies. Um, and we also have our topical products. Our topical products can be used for any pain or discomfort. So the pure products will not show up in your urine drug screen. The power products could potentially show up in your urine drug screen. So you want to stay away from the power uh, tinctures. You want to stay away from the uh, smokable products, the CBD joint, the cartridges. And you also want to stay away from the spices because they do have the 0.3% or less of THC. Dr. Rita, there's a couple questions that were above some of the questions you answered. I don't know if you saw them. I um, did. One of them is, why is the pure tincture only 300 milligrams? So the pure tincture is only 300 milligrams. That's a great question because we have um, used a special delivery system called nanotechnology. And what nanotechnology is, is it causes the particle, the CBD molecule, to be very, very small or water soluble. Can you um, mute yourself, Kathy? I hear a lot of background noise. Sorry. No problem. So the nanotechnology is part of our pure product. So the nanotechnology causes the CBD to be more water soluble, which makes it more bioavailable to the cells. So that pure tincture is 98.7% available to the cells. So it's going to get into the cellular level quicker, quickly, more effectively. And so 300 milligrams is all that is needed in that particular product because of the nanotechnology, because of the efficiency that it has on a cellular level to give you a response. Great question. Someone asked, can you restate the part about taking CBD in multiple methods? So I recommend that you use our products in all forms of ingestion. The tincture, the topical, the smokables, and the edibles. 
Why? Because you want the CBD to have a uh, steady state in your bloodstream. As one product is working, the other one is wearing off. And what I mean by that is that the tincture takes about 15, maybe 30 minutes to get into the bloodstream. And it's effective for about six to eight hours. The topical is going to offer local relief. So it's going to offer that local relief that you need for areas of joint pain, muscle pain. That's going to work pretty immediately. And its effect is only going to last about two to three hours. The gummies take about 45 minutes to get into your bloodstream, right? And they're going to work about six, four to six hours. The smokables are gonna work really fast, one to five minutes, but they're gonna only last one hour. So you can see as one is getting into your bloodstream and starting to work, another one is wearing off. So as you're sleeping, you want that gummy in your system. So as you're sleeping, it's reducing inflammation as you're sleeping. It's helping you to get that restorative REM sleep. When you wake up, that effect is pretty much out of your bloodstream. You're gonna take that tincture. So during the day, that's working. If you need in between what we call breakthrough assistance, those smokables are for that breakthrough assistance. Either breakthrough because you're having anxiety attack or maybe you're having some uh, acute pain. Within one to five minutes, you're gonna use those smokable products, those cartridges or that CBD uh, joint to help with that. So at all times, you've got more of a steady state in your bloodstream of the CBD working. And that's especially true for those out there who have chronic long-term conditions, right? They have the arthritis, they have the issues with uh, autoimmune conditions, lupus, fibromyalgia, um, they may have issues with depression, anxiety. Um, they have pretty mild to moderate to severe challenges in their life that they need CBD to assist with. So someone who has chronic long-term osteoarthritis, you know, Dr. Rita's rub is just not going to do it, right? You're going to need that tincture in your life. You're going to need those gummies in your life. You're going to need the Dr. Rita's rub in your life and also those smokables in your life. Um, oh gosh, there's a lot of questions now. Can someone who is on blood thinner take our tinctures? Yes, someone who is on blood thinners can take, your tinct with, take our tinctures, but you have to let your physician know that you want to use CBD. One of the blood thinners called Coumadin or Warfarin can potentially prolong a bleeding time. So if you are on Warfarin, on Coumadin, that's one of the more popular blood thinners, you wanna let your physician know that you wanna use CBD. Your physician's gonna to need to check what we call your INRs a little bit more frequently. So it doesn't mean you can't take CBD, but it does absolutely mean that we want your physician to monitor those INR levels more frequently. What type of education and business support is provided if one signs up to start a dispensary? So Pamela Sam Sampson, uh, thank you for that question. We provide a lot of uh, support. We have something called a Wakana University. It's an eight hour platform online where we give you all the education that, we, that, you, that you want. Huh. And we also have a lot of business support in our Wakana University. So if you're a guest, Pamela, you're going to contact the person who invited you. They're going to get you enrolled. They're going to get you everything you need to be successful in this business and to get you started and to get you educated. So we've got calls every single day. We have calls in the morning. We have webinars. We have trainings. Um, so we are not lacking in education or training or business support. Um, 
I take my blood pressure twice in the morning at 9 and 9.15. It is 140 over 70. Um, I'm not sure what the question is, but um, you possibly can repeat your question. But, uh, you know, we're not here, the Dr. Crawfords, the Dr. Gettings, the Dr. McGuire's, the Dr. Joyce Smith. We're not here to be your physician. We're not here to make any diagnosis um, or recommendations. That's why it's important that you consult your physician if you're on medication, uh, if you're under a doctor's care. You want to consult your physician. Engage your physician in this conversation with CBD. So I'm not really sure what you're asking about your blood pressure, um, but I'm not here to make a diagnosis. That's for Jewel. Any other questions, Kathy? What is INR? INR is one of the, um, the indicators that we use to determine if your warfarin or your Coumadin is at a good level. You know, if an INR is too high, then that means that your blood is too thin. If an INR is too low, it's a marker we use when we draw your blood, then that means you need more Coumadin. So INR is just a marker, Cheryl, that we use to uh, measure the effectiveness of your Coumadin, to make sure your Coumadin is dosed correctly. There is one in the Q&A about, can you give us the reference that you put up? I'm not exactly sure what she's talking about though. Which reference? Sure. Yeah, let's see if I can find my slides again here and we will give her that reference. And there's many, many, many. Can you see that slide? Not yet, just you. Okay. Let's see if we can share that. Okay, let's see. Where is at the very end of my slide deck? Let's see if you can see it now. Someone mentioned the video that you referenced. Is that what you're looking for? Um, no, I'm just looking for my last slide. That's all. Okay. It's on the last slide. Let's see. Any other questions? Let's see. I believe can you, you see all. this slide? Yes, we can. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Diana Coleman wants you to please confirm the five products for CBD health. The five products? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what she means, but maybe she's looking for some recommendations in our product line that can assist. I'm not sure. You want to be more specific, Diana? Diana Coleman, please confirm the five products for CBD health. Well, we talked about our tinctures. We talked about our topicals. We talked about our gummies. We talked about our smokables. So for overall health, if you are addressing symptoms that can assist with blood pressure, you want to use our tinctures our topicals, all of the products we talked about, our gummies and our smokables. And again, the reason, can you just mute your phone, Kathy? Sorry. Uh, background noise, no problem. The, the reason why you wanna pair all of those products together is because again, you want a steady state. You want a steady state of the CBD in your bloodstream as one is wearing off and you're consuming the other one and it starts working 
you always have that CBD, right? Even when you sleep, that CBD is working to reduce inflammation. It's working to help you get into that REM sleep, that restorative sleep that uh, boosts your immune system, that helps you feel regenerated in the morning. So all of those products we talked about how long it takes to get into the bloodstream. We talked about when it wears off. So as you're using one and it's wearing off and consuming another, it's always in the bloodstream. So that's why I highly recommend using all products. When you talk about chronic conditions, like I said, you have had long-term osteoarthritis. Uh, Dr. Rita's rub is just not gonna do it, right? You're gonna to need to use the tincture, the topical, the gummies, and even the smokables. Any chronic long-term issues, you wanna have all products on board, right? Tinctures, topicals, gummies, and smokables. Yes, Diane Coleman, that's exactly right. Wonderful. Any other questions? Did I miss anything? I believe you got it all, ma'am. Ah, fantastic. So again, whoever invited you, your guest on the line, I know there's one guest that's already interested in the business. Uh, you want to you contact the person that invited you. You want to get your any other questions answered. Um, the person that invited you has my email. My email is Rita. I'll put it in the chat, md at wakana.com. Maybe you may have some more questions a little later or tomorrow. Um, you want to contact the person that invited you so that they can get these products in your hands and get your, these products immediately in your hands. Uh, I want to, did we ever get the blood pressure medication or blood pressure question answered? You mean clarity on why they gave you their blood yeah, pressure? Yeah, right. Mm, I think she said, I'm glad that question was asked and answered phenomenally. Thank you. So maybe, Jewel, we answered your question. Yes. Oh, actually, she did um, uh, come back with, um, it was uh, 140 over 70, and then her second part of it was at 915, it was 120 over 85. What could be the reason? I have no 15 idea. 15 minutes later, yeah. Who knows? You'll have to... You, that's a conversation offline. I, I don't know. I don't know if you're on medication. I don't know if you're taking CBD. And remember, Jewel, I'm not your doctor, so I can't give you any medical advice. So email me and see what we can do. But maybe she's saying that her, her blood pressure improved after using our amazing products. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. She says she's on meds and CBD. Okay. And I, I absolutely agree with her. I have the exact same experience. Ah, wonderful. I texted wonderful. you my, uh, my blood pressure recently, remember? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, lots and lots of testimonies out there. Lots and lots of amazing uh, stories when we marry uh, CBD with traditional pharmaceutical medication and we engage our physicians with all of this because I'm telling you CBD does dilate the vessel so you want to make sure that you are monitoring your blood pressure because many many people find that CBD does help and so many many people are now decreasing their medication dosing. They're even coming off their medication with the help of their physician and our amazing products. So I want to tell you to have a good evening. We hope to see you next Wednesday. Um, I am going to go back upstairs to my patients so that they can have babies. I'm telling you, we're seeing a COVID sort of explosion here of all those folks that were quarantine, um, we're seeing a little explosion. So uh, see, we're going to see you next Wednesday. You might get to your 30,000 yet, right? I may get to my 30,000 <laughs> babies that I get to deliver. 
Dr. Crawford, did you want to say anything or you were just? No, I was just okay. saying, so, and yes, who, um, once again, you want to always follow with your primary care doctor and we're just here to kind of assist. Thank you so much. That's so important. So important. Well, have a good night, everyone. Yes, the recording will be out. And yes, we want you to share the recording. But more importantly, if you're a guest on the line, please contact the person that invited you so you can get your, your products uh, immediately in your hands or as quickly as we can get them to you. And we will see you next Wednesday. Thank you, Anita. My soror. Well, we love Dr. Crawford. She's a Delta. We're all in the magnificent Greek sisterhood. <laughs> Good night, everyone.